This episode of the Burr Martin Experience Podcast brought to you by... Fiftieth birthday coming up, divorce, funeral, then Painful Memories Party Supplies is the place you want to go. Painful Memories is always there to remind you of those celebrations you'd rather forget. Sixtieth high school reunion coming up, another holiday to remember those we lost. Then look no further than Painful Memories Party Supplies. Balloons, party favors, ribbons, and even tablecloths all come in black. Now some of our painful memory supplies come in black, midnight black, and dark black. So come on down to Painful Memories Party Supplies. We're here when it hurts. Yeah, um, Mr. Wahlberg? Uh, who is this? Mark? Hey, this is uh, Burr from the Burr Martin Experience Podcast. Remember, we met at Chewbacca Mom's birthday bash. I was, was kind of wondering, uh, hoping you could do me a favor. Bro, I am right in the middle of trying to film Ted 3, and Daddy's home too. I don't have time for this. Come on, please, man. Just just one little fan or kind of a minor celebrity gets a major celebrity endorsement thing. You know, just something, I, I sent you the email, just something where if I say something stupid, nobody blames Pants Penning Studio. Okay, I'm going to do this, but it's like I tell Donnie. You can't ride my coattails forever, okay? You get one favor, and that's it. All right, anybody listen to this podcast... If you blame Pants Penning Studio for anything this guy says, you're a dummy. You're a moron. You probably eat too many carbs, and it went to your head, and you don't exercise enough. So that's what I'm telling you. Is that good enough? All right. I want you to lose this number. Don't call me again. There's just so many bad things going on. It's just something dumb to laugh at. You know? A comedian has taken to Instagram to recreate his teenage daughter's selfies. Yeah, this is, you know, everybody wants to be famous. I'm not sure if this is the way I really wanted to go. <laughs> That's funny to me. <laughs> we know that you uh, beat Batman to be voted Hero of the Week in the UK. And, you know, you're looking at the only guy to beat Batman, and he was wearing a white tank top at the time. This is my favorite dude right there. <laughs> Uh, we'll just say we started. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, how you been? I'm good. I'm good. Been, right. uh, I've guessed it on the hustle the last two weeks. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I should mention, uh, my guest is Amanda King. If you didn't already <laughs> read that on the banner or recognize the voice. Yes. Um, and then the ladies' night just came out on Friday for the nerd. So, it's, it's a good one. <laughs> I, I'm going to say, though, I hate... The ladies' night promo, because every time I edit and I put it in, that song is in my head. Just oh. that last little <laughs> the ladies, just that part. The we'll go, we're oh, reliable oh. with the ladies. Are you not a Hamilton fan? All day in my head, but just <laughs> that part. Just, <laughs> just be writing something down. Reliable with the ladies. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pulled from the Hamilton musical. So. I'm 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 Hamilton Hamilton Virgin. Oh, you, I, you should listen to it. I know that's it's it. so says. good. It's, it's like so the thing. Good. Yeah, that was all. That was all I listened to for. <laughs> for Your a face long time. is like me right now when I <laughs> you you don't you haven't seen Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I make also that face for Star Wars. So uh, if that makes you feel better, <laughs> what? who are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh. So oh, let me tell you how dumb I was last night. Oh, how dumb were you? I was really dumb. <laughs> In fact, I, I ranted uh, on Facebook, which you just should not do. No, we really shouldn't. <laughs> no, you should really give yourself time before you do. So um, take to Twitter like the president. That's <laughs> that's, right. that's the correct at way. Three a.m. Maybe I should <laughs> yes. have just done that. Maybe that's it. I'm really mad at six. I'll wait till three and then I'll tweet yes. this. <laughs> It'll be bigly. So, uh, me and a bunch of other cosplayers were invited to the Empire Indoor. Football League uh -huh. had a game and it was like superhero night. Okay. So I know uh, Nathan O'Brien from my Lux City Comic Con and he asked me, hey, you know, would you come out? I'm having kind of trouble finding some people. Uh huh. Love Nathan. And so, and I kind of work with the Lilac City. So I'm like, sure, I'll show up as Star Lord. Right. You know, have a good time, whatever. And so he goes, I got six other people coming. I'm like, cool. At least I won't be there by myself. <laughs> so. I go downtown. I have another podcast, a smart investing show podcast uh -huh. that I do. Got down there, got everything set up, did not have my electrical cord to my board. 
Mm-hmm. So couldn't do the podcast. No. So I go downtown at like, like he needs to do it at two. So I'm downtown at two o'clock. The Empire thing doesn't start till six. I'm like, okay, I can't drive home because it's a half hour drive if I drive. So I just <laughs> I, I goof around town. I blow the every. I go to like Goodwill Value Village. I have an idea for a really funny costume that I can't share, but <laughs> couldn't find anything for that. I'm like, okay, this is a bust. It's like four thirty. Like, okay, I have nothing else to do. I've eaten. I've stalled. <laughs> I, I have nothing. So I'm just going to go to the stadium early. Uh-huh. So I go to the stadium. Uh, the girl the girl goes like, oh, well, you're the first one. <laughs> no duh. So <laughs> she takes me to the green room. Uh-huh. And it's got a little sign that says the green room. It's a huge room. It's like this separate bathroom and separate changing Fancy. room, like the big makeup mirror, you know, and the wow. lights and everything. So I'm like, cool. <laughs> so I start to change and well, like my voice, uh, <laughs> I start to change and I'm I'm in the Star-Lord suit. It takes me like 20 minutes to get into it. I'm just sitting there watching YouTube videos. Okay. <laughs> well, nothing to do. Hang out. Pretty soon it starts to be like quarter after five. Well, they want us upstairs at 545. Uh-huh. So I'm starting to think, okay, if it takes me 20 minutes, I mean, these guys got to be here. They got to be right. dressing, and I'm all by myself. So I'm texting Nathan, and I'm like, there's nobody here. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, let me let me try and, and get a hold of some people. So I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and and uh, pretty soon this girl comes in, like about five minutes later, and she says, oh, I just want to make sure, you know, there's water over here and towels. I'm like, okay, cool. So she leaves. <laughs> Nathan calls me back, and he's like, yeah, there's one guy who says he's going to be a little late, but everybody says they're going to be there. Okay, I'm here by myself. I don't see anybody. <laughs> it is now 5.45. I'm like, Nathan, nobody's here. <laughs> and I'm feeling like an idiot because there are, there are huge football players walking around the outside. <laughs> right. Like six, And you're dressed eight, as Starler. And I'm 5'8 I'm <laughs> at best, 5'9 <five>, <laughs> with a good shoe. <laughs> Dressed as Star Lord, like an idiot. I have oh, a little God. tree man on my shoulder. So <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go out there by myself. And hey, guys, <laughs> I mean, I might as well put on a red <laughs> nose at that point. So I, I, I'm looking around. I'm like, dude, this is this is stupid. And so I, I go to Facebook. This is completely unprofessional. If you say you're going to be somewhere, you should be somewhere. And if you <laughs> promise somebody that you're going to do a gig, you should be there. And this is unprofessional. I'm like, oh, man, right. angry face emoji. You know? <laughs> So at six o'clock, I'm like, dude, I want to help out, but I can't do this by myself. And there's no way I'm making the walk from the basement to wherever you are (laughs) by myself. So he's like, yeah, I understand. I open up the door just a crack and I see Captain America's shield go around the corner. I'm like, well, wait, what was that? (laughs) So I go running after him. (laughs) So I go running past the only people I'm taller than the drill team. Which are all like, you know, teenage girls that are right. like five feet tall. I go running past. There's everybody. There's Spokane Batman. There's a Batgirl, Superman, Captain America, Spider. Everybody standing around. They're like, oh, we didn't, we didn't know you were going to show. <laughs> what do you mean I wasn't going to show? I was looking for you guys. They put them in the mascot room. Uh-oh. I was the first one. I got the girl who didn't know what was going on. And so everybody else came oh, and they're God. like, oh, we know where you're going. You're going in the mascot room. So I'm quickly <laughs> going to Facebook, deleting, delete, delete. delete. <laughs> yeah, I felt like a complete moron. I was all mad. Like, oh, here's everybody. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I, I found out, though, being dressed as Star-Lord, mm-hmm. ironically, Hardly anyone knew who I was. So <laughs> there, there's nothing greater than a big lineup of superheroes, and everybody, go get your picture taken with Superman. Go get your picture taken with Batman. Go get your picture taken with Batgirl. And, you know, get your picture taken with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably been just long enough since Guardians of the Galaxy came out, and people are like, who is that? Right, I, I was called Ant Man. Uh, I was called Iron Man because I have the mask. Right, and so. no, I did notice actually uh, one of the pictures you'd posted that I had seen, like the angle that you took the picture, it that did look very Ant Man like in the mask. It did. Area, well, yeah, so. and then I had like the long red coat. Right. So it, I guess it could be like the Ant Man jumpsuit. I don't. Right. Know. But I mean, you know, but the kids come over and they're like Groot. You know, they're like oh, yeah. a little solid little Groot on the shoulder. But, right. Yeah, but the parents. And so it, I just started thinking, like, this movie made, like, a billion dollars. Like, 
you can't say Chris Pratt to most girls without them going, yeah, yeah Chris <laughs> Pratt. <laughs> so, I, I just... Uh, I know I live in a nerd world where, like, you know, I was I was awake at midnight when the Guardians of the Galaxy first trailer came out. I was like, wait, I I watched the Super Bowl for a movie trailer, you know. But come on, it's it's everywhere. I mean, you can't go to the movies without seeing the poster, the little. I mean, I go through my Facebook feed, and it's every eighth post is Guardians of the Galaxy something. Yeah, but American attention span. It's is that mm, it? I think so. Yeah, we live in a sad, sad world I mean, right you, now. <laughs> okay, you mentioned Hamilton. Did, like, uh-huh. do you run into people? You're like Hamilton. They're like, what? What? What is Hamilton? Well, no, but we converted all of them, and we don't meet new people very <laughs> often. So. <laughs> Uh, who was it? Who was it on the uh, <laughs> on the message board? It was like I want to meet new people, but I don't. Like, uh, yeah, but I Brandy, don't like yeah. Brandy, who was going to be here today and then didn't. <laughs> uh, that's kind of yeah. I would really like to meet new people, but I just don't like people. Yeah, so that and makes that's it difficult. That's totally us, and that's why when you know she asked the question, I was like, podcasting. That's what you do when you right. want to meet new people, but right. don't like people. You podcast, right? <laughs> 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 then you meet like one new person a week, and. Uh, it's good. And then you're done. <laughs> My guest this week is a person I won't see for the rest of the year. Yeah. So. And, you know, then it's like, it's a good feeling I'm out. I'm like, okay, you're cool. We could hang out some other time when I decide to go out in public there we go. again. <laughs> is podcasting just an, just an interview process for friends? <laughs> is that what this it, is? It has turned into that. It was not that to start with. But that's... Well, then let me ask you, how come people keep doing podcasts with Will? Um, I'm confused by that. <laughs> <laughs> because I talked to uh, him enough. Because <laughs> he's he's good people. <laughs> I I'm just kidding you, Will. No, everybody loves Will. He he can be a bit. Um, I don't even know what the right word is. I was going to say abrasive, and that's wrong because he's he's the gentle giant, really. But <laughs> um, he, yeah, he can be a bit uh, outspoken, lewd occasionally. Um, but he he's getting better about knowing when to not say the horrible things. So. <laughs> See, the older I get, the more the more I realize I need outspoken people because I just don't care enough. So <laughs> let them yell it. Yeah, like the other night at the at the Empire thing, we we're walking around. Well, we're such. A, I don't know. What do we do? Or I don't know. Does anybody have a plan? And the the guy who was Superman's like, well, I'm gonna go look for uh, someone. Cool. Let's follow Superman. I, I don't want to be in charge. Just. Oh I guess God. if I'm going to follow anybody, yeah. it'll be Superman. Yeah, for sure. We were talking about uh, Superman at my friend's house last night. Um, my friend who dyed my hair, we were, Verity was with me and her brother lives with her. And, and Verity was watching uh, Ladybug Girl. It's this cartoon on Netflix. Right. and um, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, she's some sort of weird superhero. <laughs> and, um, and like, you know, her hair's purple in the show and no one else in the show has purple hair and so the my friend's brother was like how do they not know it's her she just puts on a mask but (laughs) she's the only one with purple hair and i looked at him and i'm like superman takes off his glasses and puts on gel like (laughs) this is not a new thing for comic (laughs) book heroes or superheroes in general like that's just how it works the somehow. Old, the old mystery man. <laughs> Lance Burton has glasses. Yeah. You know, uh, was it Captain Amazing doesn't? So that's, <laughs> yeah. that's all you need to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I will admit there was the the Superman that was there last night. He actually put on a pair of glasses when he wasn't Superman. That's that amazing. Needed. So it was like I okay, saw he had know. the little curly cue. Little curly cue with, with a little bit. He was the guy that uh, I don't know if you listened to the, the I was like a couple of podcasts ago where I, I was sitting in with the symphony and they had superheroes. It was like superhero night. Uh huh. And they had they wanted to make it look like superheroes were just kind of everywhere for the kids. So right. they had tables up on stage. And like on one side it was Poison Ivy and someone else, and then on the other stage they asked me to sit in my X-wing pilot suit uh-huh. at, with Superman, who uh-huh. was that guy, and he's the one that saw me when they started playing the Princess Leia theme, uh-huh. and they started showing the video, <laughs> right. and I started tearing up like an infant, <laughs> it, like he was the one that was sitting next to me, like, oh okay, oh well, yeah, <laughs> hey Superman, I'm just gonna cry near you. You know, I'm beginning to think that. Uh... Maybe it's just nerds, but men, <laughs> grown men are more in touch with their emotions than society would have us believe. Because uh, when we went and saw Logan, um, it was like the week it came out. 
and I was having a bad day. And so like, I'm crying. There's parts that I'm crying uh-huh. and, and I'm like trying to be silent because one, I don't like to cry Two, I'm in public. I really don't like to cry in public. And three, I'm surrounded by grown men and I don't want to be that uh, girl. Yeah. You're going to be, you like, know, yeah. but then <laughs> as I'm sitting there, like, trying to surreptitiously wipe my tears away and like, you know, all right. of this. Right, you do that. I hear the, this. Oh, I got a scratch on yeah. my eye. <laughs> I keep hearing this <laughs> <laughs> in stereo from like the whole theater full of grown men and they were all crying too and I was like, oh, I'm cool. It's fine. I, was like, <laughs> I think Andrew was the only one not crying and that's because he's a soulless bastard. So... <laughs> So without spoiling the ending, was there any other part that you cried at? During yes. That? Okay, which parts? Well, I can't. I, I will I spoil really, the movie. <laughs> hey, it's been out for like two or three weeks. As long as we don't say the ending, I didn't. I didn't really cry. I know my. I took my boy, and he was like, "Dad, I didn't feel like doing anything all day after that movie. I was all depressed." <laughs> like, well, I. It was not a lingering, uh, like malaise. He felt it all day. I think I ruined yeah. that child for the whole day by taking him to see Logan. <laughs> I feel bad. Well, he's a teenager. How much does he do uh, anything yeah. all day, anyways? Depressing maybe teenagers. It, maybe it was just that. <laughs> <laughs> no, the um, the Patrick Stewart parts. Uh, oh, were, you kind of find out about him. Well, that and then just the end of uh, okay. that was upsetting, and it was actually it was really more like um, you know Logan's reaction to that that was. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'm kind of I don't know empathetic or whatever when it comes to um to movies that are well acted not, mm. <laughs> not i'm not gonna cry during sharknado but um, <laughs> that part where david hasselhoff gets his arm ripped off yeah um but like seeing other people's pain that like being acted out well tends oh, okay. to get to me more than like you know someone dying yes that's sad but you know he was old. It yeah. was gonna happen, but then like seeing the raw pain, it was like, oh, uh, okay. Uh. I I cried during <laughs> Titanic. Uh, uh, I but, was fifteen, so I don't yeah, remember. Same. I probably didn't though because I was see, like, but I didn't this care about stupid. anyone else. <laughs> it was the one part where the where the woman is reading. She starts reading the story to her kids, uh-huh. and you know they're gonna die because they're poor and they're steerage and they're right. like getting flooded. And yeah, that was that... the part I was like, ah. Uh. And my wife kind of looked over at me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not crying because the two main characters are gonna die. I can care less about Rose and whoever. Yeah, <laughs> that part in the uh, the band where they're playing. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Those those are the two parts I remember as being like the most you know heart tugging kind of parts of that movie. So right. I did end up seeing it I think three times because wife, not because I wanted to. It was like all my friends wanted to do. I had like one group of friends, but we kind of hung out with each other like separately a lot of times. Okay. And so yeah, I just was one of those that I ended up just with each of the splinter it. groups <laughs> as they went to see. I was like, oh, this movie is not good enough to see three times in a week. <laughs> well, not when they're like over two hours. Yeah. Like, you know, you want to go see yeah. Waterboy or something? You know, it's like an hour and a half. <laughs> okay, fine. I can deal with that. Yeah. But I mean, I was living in Walla Walla at the time. There wasn't a lot else to not- do. <laughs> So. You, I hear you just got Titanic last year. So that's <laughs> <laughs> they're just now showing Guardians of the Galaxy one. <laughs> yes, so I know one recognized you. They were all from Walla Walla. <laughs> well, I there was a, there was a moment I, I cracked up uh, during the the sports <laughs> the sports game the sports balling. Yeah, the sports balling. <laughs> there was that there was that scene on. Uh, um, Big Bang Theory, where Leonard goes over to Penny's like big football party thing, uh-huh. and and he's like, "Whoa, that was a great ending!" And she's like, "Oh, honey, that was just the end of the first quarter." And he's like, <laughs> "How many quarters are there? Yeah. Like four." <laughs> that happened last night. Where you know a bunch of nerds were sitting in the room, and Alexandra, like, I'm, I'm like, "Okay, there's only seven more minutes to the third quarter," and she's like, "Wait, how many quarters do they play?" <laughs> just, four. She just ah. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of implied in the name, honey. But <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, we want it out. Then, but then we're all standing like they're all playing. They're all uh-huh. in the field playing, and there's touchdowns and horns going off, and we're all in the corner just going, "So yeah, did you see that last movie?" Like, you know, we're a bunch of superheroes standing around could not care less about the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're not a sports person, it's 
it's you're not gonna get converted by arena football i don't think no so. you know what it reminds me of is is when like battlestar galactica when they had their little game where you just shoved the ball in the little hole in the wall i mean it was i don't even know what they called it they were it was just an excuse to wear really tight shorts in the 70s <laughs> But it just reminds me of like, this is a game that they would invent if we were all on a spaceship and we just didn't have a lot of room. You know, it's like, well, we'll cut the field in a quarter you yeah. know, and, then, <laughs> and we'll run it on like a rubber mat that's painted green like grass. You know? yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they're not athletes, but the game itself just, I don't, I don't ever see having a season pass. Yeah. Um, I, my mom was really into it when she was in town when it was still the shock or whatever, because it's something different now the empire the right? empire yeah. yeah which just makes it sound menacing to me but that's because i <laughs> grew up on star wars <laughs> I, I yeah i mean i know it's inland empire but yeah yeah um but uh yeah and my sister was really into it for a while too but i don't know and i don't think i've even gone to a game actually <laughs> well yeah i i I've been and invited. i like football like I I watch NFL every Sunday when it is oh. football season. See, like, I remember I'm liking football. Yeah, but. I remember liking Monday Night Football and all that. But I don't know somewhere along the line, I just and I've been invited <laughs> to three shock games. Uh, at one time when it was when the Star Wars group came, I was actually cheering for the other team before I realized <laughs> I was cheering for the wrong team because <laughs> our Darth Vader guy leans over and he's like. No, man, we're in the black jersey. Oh, <laughs> Oops. oh, oh, boo, <laughs> boo on that other team. <laughs> That's awesome. There's a guy at work that he bought everybody these. There's these big foam. They're like three feet big of like logos. Mm -hmm. Like the one guy likes Green Bay, so he bought him a big Green Bay foam thing. Another guy likes Seahawks, bought him right. a Seahawks one. He didn't buy me one, so I just made one that just says sports ball. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Go <laughs> sports ball. <laughs> Put that ball thing in the other dude's goal thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, our, uh, again, I'm a big disappointment to my father. So. <laughs> yeah, me too. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to commercial, and then we'll come back with some nearly news. And I really don't have a whole lot of notes, so this might be a shortened podcast. Okay. So I really don't have a lot of notes. I have like nine pages. Uh, so, all right, we'll go to commercial and be back right after this. Hello, my name is Will Gilman, producer of The Hustle. We were asked to come up with a family-friendly promo, which is difficult because we curse a lot. And generally speaking, it's a no-holds-barred comedy show. We use words like ass, bit, and nipper. You see, we are an edgy show. We use words like abs, bits, further, cart, and mirror. You see, we are an edgy show. <laughs> That'll trick him. Now, where'd I put my chocolate milk? Hustle. That's right. It's the Hustle with your host, Adam Tucker, Travis Powell with the news, and occasionally Will Gilman. You can find more Hustle at pantspending.com forward slash hustle. I know you've got to get your hustle on, so I pray. Pants Pending. Hey everybody, this is Burr Martin interrupting his own podcast to tell you about another podcast that he does. I'm That Narcissistic. Smart Investing is a show that I did with investment advisor Michael J. Wren for over 12 years. So we stopped doing radio and now we're doing the podcast because it's way easier. You don't have to listen to commercials. You don't have to get up at 8 a.m. to listen to it. You can just download it any old time you want to to listen. Now, if you're a serious investor, I urge you to listen to Smart Investing because this show is somewhat like this show in which it's my dumb personality and Mike's smart personality and together we make an investing show that you can actually listen to and not fall asleep to. So go ahead and go to smartinvestingshow.com. You can learn more about Mike, you can learn more about me, and you can also download the podcast on spreaker.com. You can also find it on iTunes, Stitcher, or anywhere good podcasts are sold. No, this one's free. You don't you don't have to invest in the podcast. Just invest with Mike is what I'm trying to tell you to do. So go ahead and listen to Smart Investing, the podcast. Pop, 
up your back. I was trying to stretch. I've been sleeping like shrugged up like this. And oh. My stress level has not been little, good. <laughs> well, it's a little, yeah. Your stress level is a little high when you're when you're sleeping with your shoulders up by your ears. Yeah, like I've woken up like that. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to hurt so bad today. <laughs> yeah. I hate that feeling when better. you know, yeah, this day's going to suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, we were there at the at the game, and uh, the I was hanging out with Bat Girl, who works at the boys' ranch, uh-huh. where you know kids are abused and all this stuff. Right. And so a lot of the kids came to the game because they were going to see her, and I think mm-hmm. she got them tickets and stuff. But as we're standing there, one of the, like he's probably like maybe six or seven comes over to me, and he kind of looks up at me. And he just looks me right in the eyes and he said something that just put chills to my bones. Oh, God. <laughs> he goes, sometimes my stuffed animals stare at me with weird intentions. <laughs> and he was serious. It wasn't like a joke. I was, oh, and yeah. I told Alexandra and she's like, yeah, he has to turn his teddy bears away sometimes when he goes to sleep. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's hit some nearly news. New York Post reports a failed bullfighter is now fine and, yes, did get his anus stitched back together. Oh. Antonio Romero was a 38-year-old Torador, Toriador, who recently got a bull's 11-inch, I really I really thought that said four, and it was 11-inch horn piercing through his rusty starfish. Wow. A doctor said the horn completely destroyed the anal sphincter and rectum. Wrecked him, <laughs> dang near killed him. Yeah, I did. <laughs> wow. I, I also had a story about Jared Fogle, and I rewrote it probably eight or nine times because it is gross no matter how I write it. <laughs> uh, so this is the best I could come up with. Jared Fogle, the shame Subway pitchman who was famous not only for losing a ton of weight, eating Subway sandwiches, but also trying to put his pickle in someone else's sandwich, an underage <laughs> sandwich, was beaten up in prison last week when one of the inmates saw Fogel hired bodyguards to protect him. He received several knuckle sandwiches to his nose and salami. Strangely <laughs> enough, even though the prison was full, there were no witnesses. <laughs> Ugh. Disgusting. All right. <laughs> CBC reports Canada's largest school board has said it will not schedule any new trips to the U.S. They stated they felt unsafe with the United States' new president. Instead, they will be visiting safer places such as Mexico, Iraq, Iran, North Korea, and (laughs) Pirate Rape Island. (laughs) That seems legit. (laughs) NPR reports an 80-year-old octogenarian entomologist, had to repeat that a few times in the car, couple donated their large insect collection worth $10 million to a local college. They also donated a thousand books filled with knowledge of all the bugs and on the covers of the books, some flatter insects that tried to make their escape. <laughs> How do you feel when you're like, an, you collect bugs and it's like a fly's buzzing your head? Do you kill it? I, I mean, think if it's not rare, it's not worth adding, <laughs> is that, right? Is that what Isn't it is? That- uh, you would feel weird because it's kind of your job, but then it's really not. Uh, com reports Heinz Ketchup in Canada recently laid off 200 workers. Here we go. No one relished the firings, but the company said it was in a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Anticipation. CNN reports that House Republicans rescinded the health care bill known as Obamacare, showing for the first time in history that the pull-out method worked. (laughs) USA Today reports that if you text or talk on your iPhone while on the toilet, it could now be filled with fecal matter, proving that there's always going to be crap on the Internet. (laughs) Who who doesn't anymore? I know. Who doesn't take their phone in with them? Yeah, but also, you know, I set it down before I wipe so and <laughs> wash my hands before I pick it back up again. So I'm a little concerned how there's how there's fecal matter getting on. Well, the phone. I have heard <laughs> if you flush your toilet, anything within a five foot radius could have like splatter um, on it or something like that. I guess that makes sense, especially if you had a particularly liquidic uh, <laughs> situation. <laughs> Taco Bellitis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I, yeah. I do get a kick out of being at work in one of the stalls and I'll hear like somebody's ringtone go, someone is calling, ring, ring. You know? <laughs> I heard one guy when I was in Walmart, I walked in the bathroom and I was washing my hands and I heard the guy in the stall, his phone rang and he's like, hey, Bob, no, I'm not doing nothing. What do you need? (laughs) Really? Maybe Bob needs to know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't answer my phone in those situations. Like the only time possibly that I would answer my phone in those situations is if it was like my mom. Like that's right. that's it. Like and would even you think then it... she will wait five minutes and I will call her back. Like Okay, it's yeah. Fine. So like if your mom called, would you think it was an emergency or you think no, she would she lives understand? across the country, so it's not okay. yeah. So you go, uh, I gotta call you back, I'm on the toilet. Yeah, or I just wouldn't answer and would call her back when I got done. Like <laughs> you know, depends on the situation. If I was waiting for her to call me back and I knew she was like stretched for time then I would probably answer. But yeah, mostly not. Yeah. They wouldn't know, but I would know. Yeah. And I feel like there's an echo. Oh, there uh, totally so, is. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, like if the conversation goes longer than you meant for it to, <laughs> then you're just stuck in the bathroom because no, you can't flush. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you're just stuck there having an awkward conversation that only you know is awkward. <laughs> I mean, unless you were, had the foresight to do like hands free. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good thing I have my Bluetooth with me. Yeah. What do you need? <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Gross. <laughs> See, I grew up in a time, you know, you you read the back of the Glade air freshener. I mean, you were yeah. just, there was nothing else to do. You you, you like my dad would walk in with a book. Oh, he's mm-hmm. going to be in there a while. Yeah, you could always tell he'd walk in with a book or a newspaper. Oh, a newspaper. <laughs> he's not going to be in there that long. <laughs> oh crap! You brought the book. Because <laughs> I'm going to the bathroom down at the gas station. <laughs> Okay, Mira reports that the simple trick of making a hole in the middle of your meal will make it taste better when you microwave it. But as you microwave your dinner for one, understand there's no way to fill that hole in your life until it's a meal for two. So <laughs> There was a book I saw a long time ago and I worked in the bookstore and said microwaving for one. And I just <laughs> felt so sad that that book existed. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you're eating alone again. <laughs> Huffington Post reports a Mexican tourist board made a cloud that rains tequila. In other news, the wall between the U.S. and Mexico is now being reconsidered. <laughs> Changed to stripper poles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that what a tourist attraction that would be. <laughs> yeah. Post and Courier reports that hunting fees in South Carolina could now be waived for terminally ill children. Why South Carolina decided to hunt terminally ill children, I have no idea. <laughs> How awful. Save the state some money, I guess. <laughs> is that part of the, the new health care plan? Probably. I think that's I think that's what it is, is they just want to make us healthier. You can't afford to get sick. Yeah. <laughs> we are gonna be a strong nation because screw you, you better not get sick. Yeah. <laughs> Oddity Central reports a Vietnamese man has not clipped his fingernails in over thirty five years. Whoa. Yeah. Ugh, While gross. he thinks the situation is funny, he does admit he has never had an affair, mainly because it takes him four hours to remove his wedding ring. Because <laughs> I just thought of those things you always see in the dentist's office with a little ball that goes all the way around the wires. <laughs> yeah. Like that would be, oh, I got to take my rings off. I'll be a while. <laughs> or does he move them around? What was the little ball on the on the two iron? It was like a oh, magnetic yeah. ball and two iron bars. Like, that would be him just kind of sliding his rings around, <laughs> yeah. trying to get them off. <laughs> oh, crap, a bracelet. <laughs> WSFA reports a principal in Wisconsin suspended a 12-year-old girl for selling sex toys. But what later turned out to be the sex toys was actually water-filled bags. The little girl was very upset, but got over the hassle quickly and just went back to normal selling crack. Because <laughs> so, that's what you do at school. New York Daily News reports Donald Trump kicked out the band One Direction because they wouldn't meet his daughter. Hey, at least he was allowed in, said all the singers of Menudo. (laughs) (laughs) We're we're probably about 50. Does Menudo still exist? That's going to be one of those things my wife's going to go, you know, you're the only one that got that joke, right? (laughs) The Independent reports a small community in Ireland has had to install a camera in their church's confessional booth because someone was using it as a toilet. Holy crap. <laughs> That's not holy water. And hopefully he didn't have his iPhone. <laughs> right. <laughs> he could just bless his iPhone, I guess. 
Fox News reported Christy Yamaguchi tweeted, Break a leg to Nancy Kerrigan on Dancing with the Stars. Lacking any Wi-Fi, Tanya Harding just yelled out something incoherent from the window of her mobile home. <laughs> I'm still relevant. The Independent reports the final 10 contestants of a reality show called Eden came walking out of the West Highlands after weeks in the wilderness, only to find the reality show they thought they were on suffering for had gone off the air and had only aired four episodes. I read about that today. <laughs> they all probably still made more money than me. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, that was that was terrible. I, I was like, well, that can't be true. And then I read it. Oh, oh, that's yeah, awful. Because I, I read They months. were out there for a year. Yeah, and no one like <laughs> no one told there, them was there film in the camera was yeah. like some guy just standing there going i just <laughs> i just don't have the heart to tell him that the battery's dead <laughs> well i guess they're planning on uh airing the rest of it for the people who did watch it or something at some point in the future it was a very vague statement by whatever uh, we don't uh, want to be sued no 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 we're gonna show it yeah I, that's yeah. what it kind of felt like but yeah the whole thing sounded like it was kind of lord of the flies disturbing well so. yeah it was kind of a, a naked and afraid, but it was like in a colony thing too. They were just supposed to make their own yeah little thing. Yeah, that was <laughs> just feel <laughs> awful. Yeah, uh, I, we we always have the television on in the break room at work, and they had that naked and afraid on. Mm -hmm. And you're allowed one item, you know. And everybody <laughs> everybody in the break room's like, I'd bring sandals, you know, or I'd bring <laughs> bandages, and I'm like, I would bring one sock. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much all I could do. Oh, I watched one guy bring like duct tape. I brought duct tape. I'm the smartest man alive. First night he used the whole roll oh, trying God. to make a bed. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. That's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I always think back to uh, Joe Rogan when he was talking about Fear Factor. Uh huh. And he just he goes, dude, I'd laugh. I'd be in my trailer. I'd get high. I'd come out, introduce some some people. They'd eat bull testicles and lose. Well, thanks for coming. Yeah. That was that was it. That was yeah. the extent of the show. Thanks for eating bull testicles. Yeah, you don't get anything. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a show I couldn't do. <laughs> I yeah, I I really like you know I could totally use a million dollars, but there are just some things I just yeah my gag reflex would not allow me yeah. to eat. Yeah, I mean I'd eat them, but the the shell. With the little bird in it, mm, the, yeah. The, you've seen the oh, it's a delicacy. Nope. Yeah. No, no. could not do that. Can be delicate for somebody else. That's not. <laughs> I, I don't even like the crunchy shell. Like if it falls into my French toast. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Th there's no way. Yep. CNN reports ISIS claims it was behind the London attack last week. Their leader also claimed responsibility for the. Uh, Let's see, uh, yeah, yeah, nope, not happy with any of that. CNN reports ISIS claims it was behind the London attacks last week. Their leader also claimed responsibility for directing Batman vs. Superman, killing Chuck Berry, <laughs> killing Chuck Barris, and marrying Morgan Fairchild. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a too old one, too? I may be <laughs> dating myself. CBS Sports reports a new law will allow guns inside Arkansas football stadium. Now we have to be prepared for anybody who wants to deflate the football at any time. <laughs> yes. Woohoo! I just see guns shooting like Yosemite Sam. Oh, that sounds like a terrible idea because football That's fans horrible. get out of control sometimes. Well, any major sport, they get out of control right. sometimes. Like, you can't. No, that's a terrible idea. Like soccer games, you know, hey, it's free knife day for the young. <laughs> right. That's yeah. a terrible idea. Ugh. It's free bat day. Yeah. After the. Uh, the World Series. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't, yeah. It's, I mean, you put beer in there and you're done. Yeah. Any, everything's a weapon now at that point. Right. Uh, yeah. Except inside football. <laughs> I don't know anything about it, <laughs> even though I was there. <sighs> Science report scientists have found a molecule that kills elderly cells and showed reduced signs of aging in mice. They plan on experimenting on apes while also teaching them how to speak and shoot guns, saying there's nothing <laughs> wrong with this. People reports Hillary Clinton has gotten a whiskey named after her as a tribute to women in history. The bottle will be will come covered in a light blue pantsuit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, I was like, you got to make the front of the other side every now and then. Uh, oh, that was it. That was all my that was all my early news. All right. It was good. I should was probably good have stuff. last page on there. And finally, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Last one. <laughs> Might help me a little bit. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, like I told you, I, uh, this may be a short podcast because I just didn't have a lot of notes. I, I didn't have time. Right. I didn't, uh, well, my, my wife would be here with a dog story that would last 20 minutes and <laughs> I wouldn't know any of the people. Here's a gross dog thing, though. We'll enter this. <laughs> so are you aware of what's called a weenie wrap? No. Okay. It's like a bandana. Uh huh. But you put it like around the dog, like up and over the dog's back, and cover up his little his weenie, uh-huh. so he doesn't pee on the furniture. Okay, so it's a diaper. Pretty much, basically? but it doesn't cover like the back. It's just okay. kind of a bandana that wraps around. Interesting. So she bought two or three for our male dog, who's he's getting old, and so he's just kind of doing it everywhere. Right. So the the object is is if they they pee on it, then it. It soaks it, and they hate that, so right. they stop doing it. So she bought two or three, and so I'm I'm going to work, and I find one sitting on the on the chair, and it's it's resting on my coat, oh. and I'm like, is this a new one? Well, no, I only used it once, but he didn't pee on it. Well, okay, <laughs> put this on your face, and then tell me that sentence again, because it's on my <laughs> stuff, and that's the same feeling yeah. that I'm getting. Yeah, <laughs> so that's. Weenie rep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Which I'm thinking again <laughs> when I'm older. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh oh. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, wrap this up. I I will say, okay, so I got some emails. Um no questions, which sucked. Yeah. Because that, you know, it's that's... harder to respond when there's no questions. Yeah, a little bit. But uh, so so last podcast, I did a thing called Martin's Raiders, which was like a little radio program I did that was like five or eight minutes long. Uh-huh. Um, and it was basically because I, I listened to a lot of like War of the Worlds type stuff and I right. always thought that was cool. So I did these little short stories and my niche was every place that they went to was real and every like like if there was a rebellion going on in that city at that year – like I would put that in there. Mm-hmm. So like they were kind of loosely based on fact. So I put it in and there were like three people that said, yeah, it was cool. And then a couple of people said, eh, it just didn't fit right with the flow of your podcast. Mm-hmm. So for those who did like it, I'm going to be putting it at the end of this podcast. <laughs> so after the credits, it's going to be like one of those little, well, like remember when you bought CDs? Remember when CDs were a thing? Right. And the hidden track? Yeah, the hidden track. <laughs> yes. That you had to wait like 20 minutes. And then you were like, it was so cool. No, it's cool because you had to wait 20 minutes. Yes. It's like a bad steak you had to wait for an hour for. It's like, <laughs> no, it was really great. <laughs> and some of them were like, 15 seconds right yeah (laughs) it was i guess it was the equivalent of marvel putting on a credit at the end of the movie or something but (laughs) but the think of like the theater goes dark and then you sit there for 20 minutes and then it comes on and goes here's 10 (laughs) seconds of captain america looking at spider-man and then that's it (laughs) i think i think the x Files cd had one and yeah it was it was almost like a half hour wait oh my gosh that's crazy you couldn't fast forward (laughs) yeah Because it was a CD. Because it was a CD. (laughs) (laughs) But it's great technology. You can fit more songs on this CD, and you don't have to. But we're not gonna. (laughs) (laughs) We're gonna put half on there and then hide one. Yes, and charge you four times as much. That's (laughs) that's how technology works, isn't it? (laughs) It's made with corn. (laughs) (laughs) That doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, after, after the little end credits of this podcast, then I will have that. So that's... so if you didn't like it, you can turn it off right. after the end credits and you don't have to listen to it and be upset. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to commercial and then I'll be right back to wrap this up. Hi, I'm Ash. Hi, I'm Steven. I write fan fiction. I'm a (laughs) podcaster and a comedian, and neither of us have seen a lot of movies, so we decided to get caught up on our catalog of movies, and while talking about it, I decided that we should podcast all of it. And now, two years later, we're still at it. And we're kind of a little bit more professional than ever. He wants to touch the... (laughs) Piney. And the one that, that knocks, is, and the one that sends the Power Rangers have to go touch things. Know how to, he wants to get vertical on the Limbo Shack. 
What the f- She is your soulmate because the Lord has told me. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> he wants to jump through that tent and into the canyon and fly away while holding a ketchup bottle. I don't know how it works. He wants to left eye Lopez for Destiny's Child. So join us every Monday on iTunes, Stitcher, or here on the Pants Pending Studios Podcast Network. Which you can find at pantspending.com. You've heard the Never Ending Random Discussion. Two guys with their guests talking and making jokes. Your weekly roundtable discussion held at a rectangular table. We are your hosts, Andrew and... Steven. And that's all there is, right? Ooh, if a lady. No, because you can't forget about their monthly visitor. And I yell, oh my god, there's a spider, help me. And she goes, nope, and walks right back. <laughs> oh my god. Like, don't leave me. <laughs> it's ladies night. Hosted by Amanda King, Marjorie Lucemore, and Katrina Honeycutt. Hello. I am a single woman looking for other single males. Is that in your Tinder? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I actually have a little sound bite of me. Hello. You guys are just like, that's hot. <laughs> yeah. I got I got a swipe. I don't Swiping even know. right. I think it's swipe right. I don't even know. My best friend is bisexual, so we'll go get titty. I didn't titty know I was again. your best friend. Oh, you're not talking to me. <laughs> you too. Okay, so my, my two best friends are bisexual. So keep your ears open for these witty women. This is no daytime talk show. Sometimes I want to sound classy and sophisticated, and then I realize I don't. This is the worst platform for that. Have like 20 different chew toys, and all he wants is a washcloth. I don't think you're supposed to call them chew toys when it's children, <laughs> Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you call them? That's what they're there for. She deals with dogs all day. You hey, you know what? When Maddie was teething, she got a Nyla bone. Okay? <laughs> it's ladies' night. Every month on the never ending random discussion, feminine farce at its finest. We're reliable with the ladies. Only from the Pants Pending Studios Podcast Network. Do you hear that? I, I do. What do you think it means? Oh, crap. We were supposed to record a promo today. Ah, you're right. Pokemon Lemon and Lime now available. <laughs> oh, Bob Ross, look at you make that mountain. Do you like laughing? Oh, come on. Who doesn't like laughing? Ask a harder one. Like, do you like really laughing? What does it, pants mean? It, it, it's a plot. Of... <laughs> that may explain why our England numbers are not doing very well. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> God <laughs> thing. I just really like the <laughs> learn something. <laughs> Join Steve and I three Fridays a month as we bring you the never-ending random discussion. Three Fridays? Well, oh, right. Uh, the ladies' night takes over once a month. Yeah, idiot. Black, <laughs> black tar on aluminum foil and, like, putting a butane torch underneath it. I mean, I don't know how to smoke heroin. I'm Should I use eight condoms? Will that help? <laughs> I'm glad we have. I think it will. You probably won't be having here. sex. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have any condoms. Yeah, no. At that point, you're just dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Find the show at nerd.pantspending.com or on your favorite podcast player. Oh, the gals are gonna be mad that you forgot about them. Yeah, yeah. Well, who cares about those? Wait, is this still recording? Never ending random discussion every Friday from Pants Pending Studios at pantspending.com. <laughs> Okay, well, that is the show. I want to thank Amanda for showing up. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for, for filling for in. Me. Always happy to have you. Yeah, we were going to have someone else. Who didn't she slept show. in. <laughs> now, is she having her own podcast? Yeah, soon? she's um, she she's the one. She recorded the first episode last week and decided she didn't like it. And then she's, so she's trying again tonight, oh, okay. I believe. So Can we say her name? Um, I think so. I mean, she's. Oh, okay. Brand, I didn't know. Brandy Rohrenbach. Okay. I didn't and know it's... how much of a secret anything. Yeah, I don't know. think it's a secret. Oh, okay. I won't say the name of the podcast in case that's a secret, but I don't think it is. Do we know what it's about? Um, she is a conservative comedian, so that's we're... two words you don't hear a lot uh, of. Yeah, and that's, Mike that's kind of her <laughs> her shtick. Um she was on the nerd I wanna say twice. Um, cause they had somebody cancel or something and she was available to fill in last minute, but oh, okay. I could be wrong anyways. Um, no, yeah, she was totally on twice. Um, but she was good and she's not like a, you know, brainwashed conservative type <laughs> that you see so many of from what I've seen. So, um, see, and that's what I tell other people too. I, I only make fun of Trump because it's, it's like fish in a barrel, mm -hmm. but 
I've posted on Facebook like a lot of Obama jokes that I thought were funny. Mm -hmm. If it's funny, I'll post it. Right. I've posted jokes about Hitler. I mean, if it's funny <laughs> enough, I like it. So I don't really care yeah. what side it comes from. Well, did you see Andrew's status this morning about... Uh... Oh, I did. What was it? <laughs> um, I don't remember how he worded it exactly, but he was like something about, I think the colored posts should have their oh, own... That's right. <laughs> Their own space. Facebook colored <laughs> posts should be separated. <laughs> yeah, they should be separated from regular colored posts. Because <laughs> so. the orange ones always make me feel like it's an emergency, and the blue ones make me feel like this will be calm. So. <laughs> and I think his was gray, which was confusing. <laughs> <laughs> so. We don't need those gray posts hanging around. <laughs> I'm going to build a wall on my Facebook to stop those gray <laughs> posts. Because yeah. all they do is they're just gray ones are just criminals. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Did you happen to see uh, Mike Huckabee doing his Twitter? I heard about it. Terrible? I didn't actually. I didn't okay. Actually see Did, it. Like, yeah. If you go to YouTube and find Jimmy Kimmel. Mm hmm. Patton Oswalt came out and did them. Yeah. As a one liner. Did you so, post that on Facebook? Uh, somebody, I might have shared it. Yeah. Somebody did. Yeah. And Which I was, was like, oh, I hilarious. should watch that, but I was doing. Oh, it was else, like so. it was like bad comedian rim shot after every <laughs> joke. He did it in such an awkward way. They were just hilarious. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Thank you. I boy, uh, have you guys been watching the news lately? It's crazy. Um, speaking of the news, breaking news. Jimmy Dean Sausage Company will be renamed Gorsuch Sausage because he's grinding up some Democrat senators into pure pork sausage. <laughs> <clears throat> Traveling's weird. <laughs> Boy, I was in uh, Norway last week. <laughs> Only English speaking TV I get at Norway is BBC. Oh my. It stands for biased, boring crap. It's more effective than Ambien as sleep inducer. <laughs> hey, you guys like mute? <clears throat> you guys like music? Yeah. Yeah. I sure do, but one kind of music I don't like Poop Dog <laughs> has nephew named Bow Wow, both bad dogs who advocate murder and sex slavery for POTUS and First Lady. Who let the dogs out? Uh, he was probably like, I can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth. I feel dirty. <laughs> right, this is what this I'm is going too to. far for my art. <laughs> Now this is wrong. You, you have yeah. to reach that certain level. <laughs> now this is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Andrew, for sharing your Pants Pending studio with me. If you want to hear more great podcasts, go to pantspending.com. And now for my allies over siege, sees the, the orange could not repeal. The orange could not repeal. All right. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> These are mysterious for my allies overseas. <laughs> All right. Thank you again. And as always, we close out the show on a positive note. Here's one of the best Doctor Whos in the entire universe telling you everything's going to be all right. I'll talk to you next week. And oh, oh, don't forget, I should probably get emails. Hey, if you got a suggestion or comment, email Burr Martin Media. He wants questions. A people. question. Give me questions. You got Qs. <laughs> I got As. <laughs> BurmartinMedia at gmail.com. There we go. And you can find me on Facebook under the Burmartin Experience. And you are going to be where else? Um, Anything to plug? I'm, yeah, Ladies Night, uh, Ladies Night of the Nerd uh, just came out yesterday. So you should go listen to that. It's really excellent. We had uh, Rebecca Cook. Um, she's a voice actor and uh, she's done all kinds of crap but um yeah she she was hilarious and we had some uh, some good stories uh interesting uh, parenting stuff <laughs> happening that came up on there um <laughs> but, i'm a i'm a man can i listen <laughs> yeah okay oh yeah all right yeah the, the show is to listen for everyone it's just <laughs> only the ladies get to come because it's once a month and that's how that works apparently <laughs> so <laughs> um and yeah the last two episodes of the hustle i was on um 
I wasn't uh, wasn't as exuberant last week for whatever reason, but the first the first week of the hustle that I was on, I was I was a little feisty. So <laughs> a little feisty. <laughs> so it was good. Um, I yeah. know when women say a little feisty, <laughs> they mean more than that. Yes, but you have a family show, and I can't explain. <laughs> so if you want non family friendly content, uh, go to the hustle at pantspending dot com and the nerd at pantspending dot com and uh, find my shows there because I'm very not family friendly usually. So. <laughs> I know we have to separate and I feel horrible I feel like it's my fault that I've separated no it's the good for us it's making us it's making us grow as a network <laughs> and as people <laughs> that don't need to pepper everything with the f word <laughs> uh, you know what speaking of which uh, I apologize to Lisa yes I did let one of the promos slip an f bomb through oh, and I whoops. apologize for that one <laughs> so, thought I caught them both I did oh, not wow. so you know, you live and you learn. So, Lisa, it was, it was the hustle, wasn't I, it? I, it was. <laughs> See, I know. Yeah, I got, I got bull <laughs> beep, and then yeah, I missed another one just at oh. the tail end. Yeah, yeah. The way, the way Adam <laughs> says that is so glorious. I love it. <laughs> it, really, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, <laughs> that's that's what I've been up to. <laughs> All right. So yes, if you go to pantspending dot com. Um, I still feel like it's my fault and I feel awful. Uh, <laughs> podcasts have been separated from mature and radio friendly. So I don't know if this is family friendly. I didn't well, use the word yeah. anus, but you know, eh, everybody's got one. Yes. Everybody it's important poops. that people know that. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't our, know that they probably have bigger problems. Our thoughts anyways. and prayers are with that Toreador. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> we, um. we hope he poops soon. <laughs> And not through a bag in your stomach. Cause, oh. Yeah, that's oh. probably how that's going to work. Bull use that guy as a puppet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all oh right. So here is David. Here is David Tennant telling you everything's going to be all right. And I will talk to you next time. Goodbye, everybody. It's all going to be okay. Trust me. I'm a doctor. <laughs> but it's up to us to make it okay. It's time to be positively rebellious and rebelliously positive. As long as we stand up for what we believe in, don't give in to anger or violence. Look out for the little guy. Keep an eye on the big guys. Refuse to keep our mouths shut. And just generally try not to be dicks. <laughs> Every little thing is going to be all right. of World War II, Adolf Hitler sent troops around the world in search of artifacts that could possibly help him win the war. As a response, America sent troops of their own to stop him. This is the story of Martin's Raiders. Atlantic Ocean, 1938. The German U-boat was making another pass, and I was pretty sure this time the torpedo that they would fire wouldn't be another warning shot. We were on our way back from France when we were contacted by the U.S. to find a man named Ford Merriweather. They said he had important information that could lead us to the Amulet of Atlantis, a jewel about the size of a man's head that held enough energy to power a fleet of boats, squadron of planes, whatever you need. After hearing he might know its whereabouts, the team knew it would be an incredible find, and an important one as well. The town of La Boule Escoublac was dark and unusually cold that night. We looked a little suspicious, the four of us grouped together, so we decided to spread out and meet at Ford's house. Natalie and Ben went south while Wong and I went west. Bars lit up the street and alcoholic laughter could be heard from every one of them, though we knew a lot of the laughter was from being nervous. Germany had its eye on this city and rumor was they were building one of the largest U-boat stations this side of, well, Germany. Too bad. It was a fun little city built mainly around a long seaside pier and held the Grand Prix de la Boule, which was Grand Prix motor racing. I'd heard of it, but never got to witness a race in person. Funny how I thought those drivers were crazy because here, with Nazis swarming the city looking for outsiders, 
They'd probably say the same thing about me. We walked cautiously and away from anyone in a uniform. It seemed to take forever, but we had finally arrived at Ford's house. We looked inside the house and saw no life. The lights were out, but around here, it could have just meant he was out drinking. Wong went around back as I walked softly to the front door. The wood looked wet and almost rotted. The porch was a danger in of itself, and there were some broken chairs lying around the sides of the house. Either Ford didn't care about looks, or he wasn't much of a carpenter. I was just about to knock when Wong came around the corner. Martin, he whispered, as loud as he could. Back here, and quickly disappeared around the corner. I walked around the back and found Wong standing in front of the back door, broken and hanging from a hinge. You broke his door, I asked. He's an old man, I think. You should see the front of this house. Wong raised his hand to silence me and said, I don't think he's going to care anymore. I peered past him and saw a man meeting Ford's description, a bullet hole in his back and his body slumped over his dinner. I walked closer to see him when I noticed something in Ford's hand. I reached down and took it, feeling like a grave robber. It was a piece of paper, a map, a map of the Atlantic and a small circle around an island about 200 miles off the coast. I was about to quietly tell Wong to try and get the door back on the hinges as Ben and Natalie raced past us yelling, Gotta move, gotta move! I looked where they had come from and noticed several German troops coming from out of a bar, blowing whistles. I looked over to warn Wong but noticed he wasn't there. In fact, he was almost passing Ben and Natalie at this point. I took off as fast as I could, catching up to them, which wasn't easy. We ran through the streets, in and out of alleys, even through houses if we saw the doors open. In fact, Ben didn't even wait for one to be open as he barged through it, all of us right on his heels. Apparently, we were too close on his heels because he fell, nearly taking all of us with him. We all jumped over with all the precision of a drunken child, but managed to miss him. He waved us on, yelling, Go! Go! as he started to get up. We ran through the city, passing bar after bar of people laughing and having a good time, all the while thinking this could be the night Germany gets us. When we saw the cargo ship we'd come in on, starting to leave, Captain Hartness was standing on the back of the boat, pointing down to a smaller boat tied to the cargo ship. We jumped in and sat back as a large ship slowly dragged us away from the city. Where's Ben? Natalie asked in a panic. I don't know, I replied. I couldn't think of any comforting ways to say it. Nazis started showing up on the pier, looking around in the night, puzzled as though we had simply disappeared, and in a way, we did. We had made it. Or so we thought. The map was a fake, planted in Ford's dead hand. All Germany had to do to find us was plant the map, the rumor, and wait. We were stooges, amateur stooges. We were stooges, Wong yelled. Natalie and I didn't need to say anything. He was right. We were too professional to be done in like this. We were fools, and we were going to be buried at sea. The U-boat circled around and came up on our side. It slowed to match the cargo ship's speed, which made us wonder if we were going to be boarded or wave goodbye to as they torpedoed us out of the water. What I could have never guessed was seeing the captain coming out onto the deck to meet our group. Gunt pointed right at us. Are you kidding me? Wong said. I'm sorry, mates, the captain said in his strong Australian accent. The money was just too good and I'm getting old. We looked over and saw the top hatch lift up from the U-boat and its captain appear out of it. I'll have them, sir! Captain Hartness yelled over. Yeah, that is good. The U-boat captain yelled back. And my money? Hartness yelled. Germany does not deal with traitors. I'm no traitor to Germany. No. But you are to your countrymen. And how could we ever trust someone like that? He yelled, laughing as he squatted back down into the sub and closed the hatch. No, no! Hartness screamed as he ran for the bridge. We gotta get out of here, I told Wong and Natalie. The dinghy he drug us out in. Is it still tied up outside the ship? Wong said. We all ran over to the other side of the ship in the spot where we had climbed aboard the cargo boat. There in the water was the smaller boat we were drugged to sea in back at Laboul. We all jumped into the icy water of the Atlantic and swam to the boat. Wong cut the rope as me and Natalie climbed in. We paddled as hard as we could away from the two ships when we saw the cargo boat explode and tear in half.
Pieces of flaming wood and metal splashed down all around us, and we all waited to see what would happen to us now. It took about five minutes for the smoking wreckage to finally go under the sea, never to be seen again. In the distance, we saw the U-boat, sitting and waiting on the other side of the white sea foam where the cargo ship once stood. Then we heard it, a plane coming from above. I could barely make it out, but it was dropping something onto the waiting U-boat. Suddenly an explosion tore the U-boat in half. A direct hit. The seaplane came in low, its pontoon splashing water on us. But weighing it down by about 250 pounds, a waving Ben and another pilot. Hey, I'm adding France to the places I hate to go now. We paddled towards him, hoping this day was finally at an end. The story you have just heard is fictional. Written, edited, and produced by Martin Media. Any resemblance from Martin's Raiders to real people, living or dead, is purely coincidental. All music was royalty free. Copyright, all rights reserved. If you'd like to know more, go to I Still Believe in Heroes.com backslash Martin's Raiders.